Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to walk you through a hands-on lab setup to configure and verify IPv6 link local addresses. In this lab, we aim to configure and verify link local IPv6 addressing on network devices. The primary goal is to understand the concept of link local addresses in IPv6 and how they facilitate local communication within a network segment. So through this lab, we will gain hands-on experience in configuring link local IPv6 addresses on a router and a couple of hosts. And we will verify the functionality of these addresses by testing connectivity between devices within the same network segment. We will also explore various commands to examine and validate the link local IPv6 addresses assigned to network interfaces. So the overall objective is to comprehend the significance and implementation of link local addresses in IPv6 networks. So again, we are going to go through the usual where we go through the topology and then go through the lab tasks. And finally, we going to walk you through each step to solve each task. Okay, first things first, I will explain the topology quickly so that we can crack on with the rest. So what you see on the screen here is a couple of hosts. We have host one and host two. Each host is then connected to a switch. Host one is connected directly to switch one via fast ethernet zero. And the other side of the link is connected to fast ethernet zero one. Similarly with host two is connected to switch two via fast ethernet zero. And the other side of the link is connected to fast ethernet zero one. Both switches is then connected to router one. So switch one is connected to router one using an interface gig ethernet zero one on switch one and gig ethernet zero 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 on router one. Whereas switch two is connected to router one using interface gig ethernet zero one on switch one and gig ethernet zero zero one on router one. So this is a simple topology, but it will do just fine for the purpose of this lab. Now let's talk about the lab tasks. So if I scroll a little bit down, you will be able to see a list of tasks that we are going to go through. So going through the tasks, we can see that the first task is, is instructing us to connect the devices according to the provided topology. So obviously, if you're going to mimic that in a virtual environment, you need to go ahead and build the topology. If you're going to build that topology physically, then you need to go ahead and patch all the cables according to the topology, etc, etc. That's the purpose of the first step. Now moving to the next step, we are going then to connect to the CLI of the router and then go to privilege execution mode so that we can go to config mode and then we can start do some config changes um, according to the lab requirements. Then we're gonna to move to the third step where we are going to enable IPv6 link local address on router one interface gig ethernet 000. And we're gonna do that manually or using the manual function. And then step number four, we are going to enable IPv6 on router one interface gig ethernet 001. And we are going to use the auto method. And then after this, step number five, we are going to then verify IPv6 link local addresses on router one. And then once we are happy with this, we can then go ahead and save the configurations. Step number seven, we are going to enable IPv6 on host one. And we're gonna use the manual function again, where we are going to statically configure link local address on host one. And step number eight, we are gonna do the same, but we are going to actually use the IPv6 address or link local address that has been assigned automatically by the computer or by the laptop itself. Then we are going to verify connectivity between host one and router one via switch one. Step number 10, we are going to then verify connectivity between host two and router one via switch two. And then what we are going to do last is we are going to try to ping host two from host one. 
and I can guarantee that the ping should fail. And the reason behind it is because by default, IPv6 link local addresses can only communicate with other devices on the same local link. So if host one and host two are on different VLANs or, or separate physical networks, they won't be able to communicate using only link local addresses. So before we jump into the configuration steps, if you look at the video description, you will see that I set the lab instructions so that you can go ahead and challenge yourself at your own pace. I also created a lab document for you to go ahead and download so that you can challenge yourself by building the lab and go through the list of tasks. Also, I have included the lab setup ready to go for you to configure, and I have included the pre and the post lab configurations. Okay. So now it's the chance for you to pause the video and go ahead and give it a try. Otherwise, just keep watching. So the first step is already been done. We already created the lab and it's all connected according to the topology. Now we are going to move to the second step where we are going to connect to each device CLI and we are going to do some config changes where we are going to change the host name. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to switch one and then I'm going to go to the CLI, hit enter. And then I'm going to type enable to go to privilege execution mode. And then from there, I'm going to say, or I'm going to say configure terminal. And then from here, I can say host name. And then I'm going to say switch. Now this has been done. I'm going to do the same thing for switch two. So click on it and then go to the CLI, go to enable mode. And you can see that the switch host name is already been done. Um, but I will just go through it once more. So say host name, switch two, and then do the same thing for router one. Hit enter, go enable, and then I'll say config terminal. And then host name router one. So now that we are we have completed step number two, we are going to step number three, where we are going to enable IPv6 link local address for interface gig Ethernet 000, and we're gonna use the manual method. So I'm going to say interface gig Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0. And what I will do, I will enable IPv6 first. And then I would say IPv6 address. I would need to grab the IPv6 address and I'm going to grab it from here. So I'm going to copy that IPv6 address. Then I'm going to go back and then I'm going to paste that one. And what you need to do is you need to say or specify link local address. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then what I will do, I will enable the interface because by default, the interface is administratively down. So I would say no shot. Then we are going to move to step number four, where we are going to enable IPv4 link local address for interface gig Ethernet 001. And we're going to use the auto method. So what we are going to do, we're going to say exit, and then we are going to say interface gig ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1. And we are going to issue the IPv6 enable command, and then we are going to say no shot down. So if I expand the screen, and then I would execute the end command to get out of config mode. And then at this level, I can then say show IPv6 interface brief. And here you can see that under gig ethernet 000, we already configured link local IPv6 address statically or manually. And under gig ethernet 001, we can see that we've obtained this IPv6 link local address by default.
So if I copy this, and also what you see here is the status of each interface. So 000 and 001 is in the up up state, which indicates that the link is operational. And then what we can do next, we can tackle the next step, which is save the router configurations. And we can do that via two methods. The first one is write mem, where you can just say wr, and that saves the running config to the startup config. Or you can use the copy running dash config space startup dash config, and that will do the same thing. So step number five and step number six are done. Now we can move to step number seven, where we are going to enable IPv6 on host one and host two. So what I will do, I'll close this window and then I'll click on host one and I'm gonna go to desktop. And in here under IP configuration, we can then delete the auto assigned link local address by default and we can copy the IPv6 link local address that has been assigned in this table. And then if I go back to host one and paste that in from there, if I issue IP config, you can see that the link local IPv6 address has been successfully assigned. So what we can do next is we can go ahead and try to ping the IPv6 address of the router, which is FE80 colon colon one. As you can see on the screen, we get ping reply. If I then go to host two, and then go to desktop, and then from there go to IP configuration, you can see that the IPv6 link local address is already auto assigned. So I will copy this. And what I'll do, and what I'll do, I will exit this application and then I'll go to the command prompt. And from there, I'll just confirm the that the IPv6 link local address is already there. And you can see that's already there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to I'm going to ping the IPv6 address for the router one gig ethernet 001 interface. So what I would do, I copied already the IPv6 address, link local address. And as you can see here, we get a successful reply from router one. So these steps summarize step number seven, step number eight, and step number nine, as well as number 10. Now, what happens if we try then to ping host one from host two or vice versa? So if I were to ping host one from host two using this IP address, which is FE80 colon colon two, the ping will fail. And that's because it, that IP address or that host, it resides in a different network segment to host one. And as you can see that the ping is failing and is not going to be successful. So we didn't get any response from host one. And if we were to do the same for host one, so that it pings host two, we would say ping and then paste the IPv6 link local address that is assigned to host two. And then I would hit enter. And again, we don't get any response from host two. So that's it folks for this video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. 
If you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop a comment below. I read all your comments and I'm here to assist you. Remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. Stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.